Welcome, welcome, welcome. Uh, Mario Michel here. Today's topic is spiritual inferences and the mind, part two. And so stay tuned. We're going to look at Satan uses inferences of man or mind. First one, Satan studied purpose to employ powers for selfish ends. The second part of that, part two, part yeah, okay. And we have more down, but for right now, let's concentrate on those two parts, and then we're going to move on to the next one when we finish these two parts. Okay? Good. Let's start. Cast out of heaven. So, first part, Satan uses influences of man on mind. Cast out of heaven, Satan set up his kingdom in this world, and ever since he has been an entire untiringly striving to seduce human beings from their allegiance to God. Of course, not human, not dead people, you have to be beings. Yes. As long as you're alive, you're a human being. Once you're dead, you're a dead body. Point break. He uses the same power that he used in heaven, the influence of my own mind, and we thought that psychology just became Prevalent, <laughs> actually no. <laughs> yeah. Psychology had been used in heaven before we even thought about it. Before before Adam and Eve was ever created. So it's been more than six thousand years anyway. So yes. And that is still right now going on. No people that are in higher status. People look at them and if they say A, then everybody does a, if they say B, everybody says B. So, it's the mind game play right now. So, Satan has been, Satan has been in that um, game for a long time. Actually, let me put it that way. Um, I, won't put, I won't say that when it's psychology, it is used only in God's purpose. And I'm going to say when it's um, the influence of my own mind, if it's for Satan's purpose, I'm going to call it manipulation. So, if it's used for God's purpose, it's psychology. If it's used for Satan's purpose, it's manipulation. You have to just know which one it is when you're when it's, when you're being involved. So, uh, men become tempters tempters of their fellow men. That's manipulation right here. Exactly, the strong corrupting sentiments of Satan are cherished, and they exert the masterly compelling power. Under the influence of this sentiment, men band up with one another in confederacies, in trade union, and in secret societies. Interestingly, all of these... Well, let me actually make the, the right sign. All of these three... That's my left hand, actually. My right hand is that one. Um, I'm, I'm not really good at, at um, my, right, my left hand when it comes to making those things. Come on. Okay. All of these three we have in this country. You know, confederacies, trade unions, secret societies. And apparently, if you want to be in the government area, you more likely want to be in those things. But where does it come from? Well, I think I can guess it better. They are, they are at work in the world agencies that God would not much longer tolerate. Letters 114, 1903. Yes. And there are agencies that are here just to hurt people, just to hurt everybody else, and they hate you, and I can promise you they do not have anything good for you. But the other one that says, hey, we love you, and we want to do everything for you, but in reality, once they get in power, you get exactly what you didn't want to happen. That's what's going on. That's actually what I call manipulation. Yes, of course. So, don't... Yep, yeah, it's okay. Now you understand when I, when I say manipulation versus psychology. So, you have to just know which one um, you're checking when you're um, using yours, in a sense. 
Part 2. Satan studied purpose to employ powers for selfish ends. Satan has nets and snails. Nope, not for birds. I know the Bible says that he lays snails for birds, but it's not really little birds, it's especially for human beings. Because Satan doesn't care about any bird on this planet, nor any lions or elephant. He cares about people. Oh, he doesn't care about people either, but he just hates people because you have a chance to have eternal life and he doesn't anymore. So, yeah. Like the snares of the fowler are prepared to entrap souls. Yes, souls. You know, not birds, souls. People like me, I am a soul. People like you, you are a soul. Yes, actually, yes. I am a soul, okay? I do not have a soul. I am a soul. You are a soul. You do not have a soul. So when you watch, when you watch those movies that when somebody dies and then you see something coming out of them, that's spiritualism. That's not true. Okay. Once you die, you're dead. You don't have a you don't have a soul that leaves your body and wander around. No, that's not true. That is Satan trying to manipulate you into believing that. You have a soul, which actually don't. You are the soul, okay? And actually, if you don't believe me, you can read in Ezekiel chapter 18, yeah, 18, where God says, The soul that sins shall die. Yeah. The soul that sins shall die. So, who dies? People die. We are the soul. There's more to that. I'm just going to go deep into it. So, it is he studied purpose that men shall employ their God-given powers for selfish ends rather than yield them to glorify God. God would have men engage in a work that will bring them peace and joy and will render them eternal profit. But Satan wants us to concentrate our efforts for that which profiteth, profiteth not for the things that perish with the using. The present truth, September 1st, 1910. Yeah, I don't think I have much to say on that one either. Uh, I've already said enough. Uh, I'm going to just move on to... Yeah, let's go right here, actually. Oh, transgression brought no new order of energy and passions. Actually, you know when you do something wrong, you kind of feel bad? At the moment, you are really liking it, but once it's gone, you're like, ah, why did I do that? Just like I did yesterday and yesterday? Yes, yesterday and Monday, I think. Yeah, I did that too. So, I get the feeling. I'm probably sure you do too. We are not to, oh, we are not to suppose that since the since the let me start again. We are not to suppose that since the trans the trans we are not to suppose that since the transgression of Adam, God has given to me, human beings a new order of energies and passion, for then it would appear that God himself, God had interfered to implant in the human race sinful properties. Christ began his work of conversion as soon as men transgressed transgressed that through obedience to the law of God and faith in Christ, they might regain the lost image of God. Manuscript 60, 1905. Yes, um, let's see. If I'm not mistaken, we think that, you know, sometimes God predestined, and so God already decided who's going to do this and that. Um, that's not basically what's going on. God already knows what's going to happen. He doesn't make things happen. Oh, sometimes he makes things happen because if he doesn't, then it won't be good for the race. If he lets things go by themselves sometimes, you know, God is in control as always. So, for instance, some of you may if God decided to not interfere sometimes in my life, right now I would be dead already. 
he knows why he didn't let me die at a certain time. And he knows why he does it. He just let somebody die at a certain time. You know, I could have been dead when I was a baby. What else? In 04, in 10, in maybe even in 2011, maybe. So, yes, I, I, anything could have happened, I, mean, I would be dead, but. Sometimes God interferes and says, no, it's not time for that person to die because I still need that person to save one more soul. When God interferes, that's when he knows there is somebody that needs to hear something so they can be saved at the end of at the end when he comes again. So yes, he was going to be saved, not to be lost. So um, that do that does happen that God interferes. But God did not bring in sinful properties in us. We chose that by sinning, or at least great-grandpa and grandma, Adam and Eve, decided to do that. Then we inherited inherited these sinful traits from them. That's what happens. Each must choose one of the one of two banners. Yes, there are only two banners. Two. There are only two banners. I don't know if you knew that or not, but yes, we only have two banners. Here is the, here is the great issue. Here are the two great powers confronting each other, the Prince of God, Jesus Christ, and the Prince of Darkness, Satan. Here comes the open conflict. There are but two classes in the world, and every human being will range under one of the two banners, the banners of the Prince of Darkness or the banner of Jesus Christ. Letter 38, 1894. Yes. Um, you know how we have multiple choices? When you go to the market, you can choose either banana or, or apple or strawberry or blueberry or blackberry or raisins or grapes or... Not raisins. Grapes. Oranges or pears or let me see, pomegranate, uh, melon, watermelon, cantaloupe. I mean, you name it. You can choose so many different fruit, right? Or you can choose brown rice, white rice, yellow rice, long grain, uh, or black beans, white beans, pinto beans, black eyed bean, black eyed peas bean. Lentils, red bean, kidney bean, uh, what else? Gobenzo bean, um, you name it. You know how we have that mean, or if you go by car, you can choose a Hyundai, Honda, Toyota, Lexus, and Acura, uh, Mercedes, a BMW, a uh, Ford, a Dodge, a, uh, a Chevy, a, a Nissan, and I mean, you get the point, or Toyota, you get the point, right? Okay, so, when you can say, oh, I don't like Toyota, I like Honda. No, I don't like Honda, I like Hyundai. No, I like, no. When it comes to the spiritual realm, I can guarantee you, there is no such thing as, oh, I don't like, I don't want to be, I don't want to be with Jesus Christ. No, 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 not that one. I don't want to be with Jesus Christ. No, no, I don't want to be with um, Satan. And that's the reason why I chose Jesus Christ to be my to be my left hand, and Satan my right hand. Because if you're standing on the right of Jesus Christ, you see, on the right of Jesus Christ, I'm right here, Jesus and myself. Then I'm on, I'm on, I'm I'm one of the sheep. If you are on the right of Satan, if you are on the on the Those that are with Jesus Christ are on his right, and those that are with Satan are on the left. So, either one, I want to be on the right of Jesus Christ. So, you get the point. There is no such thing as, I want to be in neutral. You know, there is no neutral in that thing, in the spiritual realm. You're either with Christ or you're against Christ. If you choose to be neutral, then you are against Christ. Yes, that's how it works. If you didn't know that, 
And I'm probably sure your pastor may not have said that to you, but if you didn't know that, you're going to have to choose which one you want to be in. You cannot choose the middle. There is no middle ground either for Team Jesus or Team or Team Jesus or Team Satan. There's only two captains. One's, one's going to lose, you know, like a soccer game. Only two teams that play against each other, not three, two teams. Like in like, oh, think of it as a final game. Ha, okay, a championship game, a final game, either basketball or baseball or NFL or soccer or whatever it is that you think of. At the end, there's a final game for the trophy. There's only two teams, two teams. You either in Satan's team or in Jesus' team. Which one do you want? Let's move on. Sin affects entire being. And I think we're going to end with that one. We're going to end with this one actually. Um, yes. Sin affects entire being. I don't make it too long. Sin affects the entire being. So also does grace. Huh. Wherever sin bounds, grace abounds, grace abounds evermore. Letter 8, 1891. But don't try to be sinning so you can get more grace. That's not the point of it. God wants us to stop sinning. Yes, I'm talking to myself too. Because I just did one, a bad thing yesterday. It is the wayward heart that has dragged down the faculties of the soul. All who would learn the science of salvation must be submissive students in the school of Christ, that the soul temple may be a, the abiding place of the Most High. If we would learn of Christ, the soul must be, em be emptied of all its proud possessions, possessions, that Christ may imprint his image on the soul. Letter 5, 1898. I don't think I have much to say on this one because it's basically straightforward. I'm going to end right here. So thank you guys for watching this video. I hope you guys like and subscribe um, because I'm probably going to be making more of these videos often. And um, and of course, you know, get that little bell so you know when, I'm, when I bring more. I'm not sure if I'm going to make any live videos in the future, but so far I'm going to try to do more of these, okay? So, um, so again, thanks guys for watching, and that was Mario Michel. I hope to see you again, but if I don't see you again, I hope to see you when Jesus Christ comes the second time. Until then, oh, yes, bye for now. Mother out.